Well, hello everybody. Welcome again to C180 Kids Church Online. I'm so glad to be with you here today. And today we have a very important lesson for you. One of the most important verses of the whole Bible we're going to be discussing, and that's John 3:16. We're going to be answering the question, what does it mean to be born again? So why don't you go ahead, take a couple minutes and watch this video that our friends at True Fire put together for us, and I'll be back in just a little bit. We've got a battle to fight. God is on our side. We've got a world to reach. Your spirit lives in me. We've got a need to feel. We know it's your will for the world to see that you said. Today we're talking about how God is love. 
And even though all those things are true and he sees all the things about our lives, God is love and he loves us unconditionally. In fact, he loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Even though he could see all of those things, he sent his son to die for me and to die for you so that he could be with us. Wow, that is love. Today's Big God story, it contains this very special verse. In fact, it's a verse in scripture that's quoted more than any other verse. Wow. And that verse is found in the book of John. John chapter 3. See, Jesus, just like every other week, we're talking about the, the story of Jesus. And Jesus is approached by this man in the cover of darkness. This man called Nicodemus. See, Nicodemus, he's a Pharisee. He's a teacher of the religious people. He's a, he's a teacher over Israel. Someone that is highly respected and looked up to. And Nicodemus sees something special in Jesus. But Nicodemus' friends, the other Pharisees, uh, publicly they've not been very nice to Jesus. They don't really support him or follow him. And so Nicodemus approaches Jesus under the cover of darkness. And he finds himself one-on-one -on -one in the place with Jesus. And as he gets in there, he begins to say to Jesus, Jesus, there's something special about you. He says, I know that you are sent from God because you do signs and wonders that only someone sent from God could do. Wow. And so Jesus responds and says this crazy random sentence. He doesn't respond to Nicodemus and say, oh, thanks, Nicodemus. That's really nice of you to say. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, only those who are born again can come to the kingdom of God. Ooh. Only those who are born again? Nicodemus is confused. He doesn't understand. He thinks different things, but Jesus kind of reinforces. He says, hey, the only way to follow me and to follow God is if you have a new life with me. Basically, he's saying be born again. Leave your old life behind and choose to live a new life with me. Jesus said these things and it was confusing to Nicodemus. Nicodemus had been told that the, the way to grow closer to God was through sacrifices. But Jesus was coming to give a new way. And we see later in the passage, Jesus begins to unfold this scripture that we all know so well. John 3, 16. This passage that we quote over and over again. And for Nicodemus, this was so, so important. This passage is, For God... So love the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. God is love. That's what we see. See, God didn't send Jesus in the world to persecute the world or to condemn the world, but to save the world. God came to save you and me. Jesus came on the earth to save you and me. That was the message that Jesus felt was so important for Nicodemus and for us today. Think about that question. Do you know that God loves you? Like, do you really know that God cares for you, that his love is for you? Take a moment to consider that. Think about God's love for you, how it's personal. Yes, God loves the world, but he also loves you. Let me speak this blessing over it. May you always remember that God loves you and nothing can separate you from his love. So being born again means that you're born two times. The first time is when you're born as a little baby and you come into the world. And the second time is when you're born in your spirit, when your spirit becomes alive, when you give your life to Jesus Christ and you receive him as your savior and your Lord. You know, I've heard it said that if you're born once, you have to die twice. But if you're born twice, you only die once. And what does that mean? It means that if you're born twice, you're born again, like I was just talking about, you're born in your spirit by giving Jesus your life and having him be your savior, then you only die in your natural body, but your spirit lives forever with him in heaven. So we know that everybody dies someday, and that's the one death that, that you'll have, but 
You'll live forever with him in your spirit. But if you're only born once and you're only born into the world as a little baby and you don't receive Jesus as your savior and you don't become born again and be born a second time, then you die in your body like everybody does and you die in eternal death, a separation from God forever. And we don't want anybody to have that second death. And so I'd like to invite you to pray with me to receive Jesus as your savior today. And you can know that you'll be born again and that you'll be living with him forever in heaven. So let's pray. Dear God, I know that I have sinned and I know that I need a savior. I put my trust in Jesus as my savior. I believe that he is the only way to you. I believe that he's your son and that he died on the cross to pay the price for my sins and that you rose him from the dead. He's alive today and I'm saved. The Bible says that when I put my trust in you, I am saved. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my savior. Thank you for saving me from the second death of hell. I put my trust in you and I ask you to give me strength to live my life for you and for your glory. Thank you for your Holy Spirit living inside of me, making me new and empowering me to live my life for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, wonderful. If you prayed that prayer, I'm so excited and happy for you. You know, the great news is that Jesus is coming soon. The Bible teaches that we are in the last days, that Jesus is coming again for his believers. And we can look all around us, and you know what? We see the signs that the time is near for Jesus to come back and call his believers, his followers, right out of the earth. So we might not even have to experience that first death, which is awesome. But either way, however it all comes to, to, comes to work out, whenever he comes back we can know that we're with him and we are born again and we do not have to experience a separation from him forever so I am so glad for Jesus I am so glad for his salvation so you know we have a little craft as we do here and we are going to be making a special little craft that has John 316 the verse that you have been learning today for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish have everlasting life. So go ahead and watch this clip of Bella, Gabby, and Lexi working on theirs and we'll come back and I'll show you the finished product and we'll talk about how you make it. them making there. It's a fun way to remember this 
very important verse, John 3, 16. So the verse is written all the way around the edge there of the circle of the world here. And you'll see in the description section in the link below, there is, or in the description section, there is a link and you can uh, check that out, print out the world here and the cross. And what I had the girls do is use watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, you can use marker and crayons. And if you don't want to use your handprints to make the continents here like I had them do, that's fine. You can do whatever you'd like. You can trace your hands on green paper and glue it on. I thought it was neat to have the handprints there because, you know, it says, For God so loved the world, and your hands there are kind of showing that you're a part of the world. God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever, when you believe in him, you will not perish but have everlasting life. And that cross, of course, symbolizes Jesus coming to the world. So I hope you have fun with this and uh, enjoy it. Again, if you don't have all of the supplies, the paint or whatever, do whatever you'd like with it and just have fun and be blessed. I love you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.